<clears throat> goodness that follows us all the days of our life. Maybe we look around and we see people who are unreasonable and wicked, but still God can turn them around just to get uh, to bring peace into the land. People we have not even thought of, and God can move in their lives and and do things that will uh, enable the church to move forward and bring the gospel to the people. Uh, we have been looking at uh, victorious living, but last time I I spoke on uh, how we bind the forces of darkness. But uh, bef before this, we we uh, saw the word of God, which is very important. And Thessalonians found the word of God to be so important that they uh, uh, they didn't take when Paul preached the word. They didn't take as the words of men, but they took the word of God as God Himself speaks to them. Uh, and then also on the following week, we also discussed on the how we overcome the devil by the blood of the Lamb and having a word of our testimony in our hearts. And uh, let's see something from the book of 1 John. Uh, it is not my favorite subject, but still, I know without faith it is impossible for us to please God. I know it is impossible for us to overcome situations without faith. So today, uh, we would, we would uh, study on faith. And I, I, I keep touching on faith. It's not my favorite subject, as I say, but I still know without faith it is impossible for, for me to please God or for any one of us. By faith we were saved. By faith we are healed. By faith we are able to uh, access to the revelation of God. By faith we read the word and we God speaks to us. So faith is important. And faith is important even for us to overcome. Let's go to the book of 1 John chapter 5 and verse number 4. 1 John chapter 5 and verse number 4. Uh, because whatever you read, eventually your faith must be built. Scriptures are to build our faith. Scriptures are not just only to puff our mind up. Scriptures are, are readily available for us to build our faith. Because our faith is being juiced out every day, every moment. From the time we wake up, faith has been utilized. It's been drawn out. It's been used because we live as um, people, as people of faith. We live around people who are men and women of no faith. They don't have any faith. They only have fear. They can only offer us fear. And most of the time we move around people with, with those who are living in fear. But we have to overcome fear by our faith. Fear can be facts. Fear can be felt, fear is tangible, and, and fear is a force, a, a deceptive force. Although Christ destroyed uh, the, the fear of death through his death, yet as much as we find people who are living, who are worshipping demons, and uh, Satan has a right to move around and cause fear to come upon. So our faith has been juiced out every day. And we got to keep refilling ourselves. We got to keep hearing the word of God over and over again. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing the word of God in Romans 10, 17. So 1 John tells us, we're talking about victorious living as a child of God. We live victorious. 1 John uh, 5 and verse 4. Whatsoever is born of God or whosoever is born of God overcomes, whosoever is born of God overcomes the world. Over, so whoever is born of God, the character or the nature of that person is an overcomer. He is an overcomer. And this is how we overcome. And this is the victory that we, that overcome the world, even our faith. It's, by faith that we overcome. As we realize our faith is being juiced out, we find that, you know, 
uh, there are times that we, we all of a sudden we believe and then all of a sudden we begin have doubts coming into our minds and fearful thoughts coming into our mind. So what are we going to do? If faith is going to be juiced out every time, we got to keep filling ourselves, we got to keep encouraging ourselves, we got to keep building ourselves, we got to keep saying the word over and over again and saying, yes, I'm going to, I'm going to speak faith. The Bible talks about faith that pleases God in uh, uh, Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6 says, it is impossible for us to please God. Let's go there. It's impossible for, uh, for us to please God without faith. But without faith, it is impossible to please Him. For he that cometh to God must believe, must believe, it's important that we believe that He is. Right now, He is not only here, He is all over. But we let's believe that He is here right now. He is. So, <clears throat> He who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder. Because of our faith, he rewards us. Rewards are for those who, who believe that he is. And to them who diligently seek him. Diligently seek him. Be diligent in your walk with the Lord. Be full of courage and boldness when you come to reading the word of God because it's the so strong people and the courageous ones who are able to study the scriptures. Not the ones who are shaky. They kind of read and they kind of think, oh, I, uh, I just can't understand it. Now, you've got to be strong if you really have to be, if you have to study the word of God. Let me take you to a scripture from the book of Joshua. Uh, the book of Joshua he was next in command after Moses passed away and he was trained by Moses. It's always good to have somebody over you whom you can look up to and get yourself trained. And uh, he was able to learn a lot from Moses, the courage and the boldness that he had to, uh, to lead six million people out of Egypt and try to take them to the promised land and Mo Moses failed because he didn't believe. There came a time that, that there was so much of pressure that came upon him that he just could not take. But Joshua was able to take them to the promised land. Now in Joshua 23 and verse number 6, Joshua 23 and verse number 6, but ye therefore, uh, be ye therefore, very courageous to keep and to do all that is written in the book of the law of Moses or we would say the word of God that you turn not from it to the right hand or to the left you got to be courageous you got to be very courageous you got to be very courageous and to keep the law to keep the word of God, not turn from it to the left or to the right. Another scripture from the book of Joshua chapter 1. Also we find God spoke to Joshua and said, Moses is no more. Don't, weep no, don't be concerned about Moses. He is no more. But I'll be with you just as I was with Moses. If you read from verse number 1, it talks about it. And then the Lord says in verse 6 again, Joshua 1 and verse 6, Be strong and of good courage, for unto this people shall thou divide the inheritance, the calling upon your life that you have to fulfill, and you, will, you have to be courageous and bold. And the next verse, verse 7 says, Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. You've got to be a strong character to meditate the scriptures. You, you cannot be somebody who is, who, 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 who is weak in scriptures, in the sense when I say <coughs> weak in studying the scriptures. 
God will reward you because you believe in him and because you diligently seek him. Those are three things that we see in the, in the life of a man of faith. Be, he's going to reward you because you believe that he is and, he, and you seek him diligently. Diligently. Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. This, he was still under the law. And if you come to the life of Jesus, Jesus said, if you keep my commandments, if you keep my commandments, I say unto you, and uh, you got to be courageous, you got to be bold, because Satan comes immediately to steal the word out of your heart. What are you going to do if you're not strong enough to handle the word of God when Satan comes? Are you going to just let him take the word out of your heart? Or are you going to say, no, no devil, you cannot touch that word. I believe in that word, that settles it. I'm not going to let the devil touch, my, touch the word that has got into my heart. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left hand, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. That you may prosper. Wherever you go, you may prosper. So, studying the word of God, meditating on the scriptures, you need to be a strong character. You need to be a strong character. You cannot be somebody who is very loose. Well, spiritual things. Well, I learned some things in church. Good. You, 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 only get, you get a glimpse of what you should really study at home when you come to church. You may not, ha you, you may not have all the wisdom when you come for a one-hour sermon. But, but you're committed. Okay, I, I, I'm, I'm given something. I'm going to get, I'm going to get back home. Get, my, get, uh, get into my homework and start reading the scriptures. Verse number 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. But you shall meditate therein day and night in other words if you really interpret this scripture rightly nothing but the word must come out of your mouth nothing this book of the law shall not depart out of my mouth i'm not going to let i'm not going to be loose concerning my my speech well i believe yeah so what I know I'm healed today, but then I'm sick tomorrow. I'm back again. I have the same thing coming maybe next month. That's not how it goes. Let the, this word not depart out of your mouth. Let the law of, of God, the word of God, not depart out of your mouth. But thou shalt meditate there in day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in the law, in, the, in therein. And then thou shalt make thy way prosperous you will make your way prosperous because you are strong meditating on the scriptures and you are not letting any anything and come anything else come out of your mouth except the word of god anything that comes out of your mouth it comes out as a revelation or it comes out of what you have meditated or probably a scripture that you have uh, that you have uh, memorized or or a scripture that reminds you of God's goodness or the promises of God, they want to speak that out. Let this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. And it also tells us in, uh, and then it says, you shall make your way prosperous and have good success. Or in other words, you will do things wisely. <coughs> I mean, wisdom is important for us to succeed in life. Wisdom is important for us to even retain what we have. It's important that we, we retain what we receive of the Lord. Isaiah 59 and verse number 21. Isaiah 59 and verse number 21. As for me and my covenant, said the Lord, my spirit that is upon me, uh, my, uh, my spirit that is upon thee and my words which I have put in your mouth shall not depart out of your mouth. Don't let go of his word. 
don't let it don't let it don't don't speak the contrary don't speak contrary that's faith don't speak contrary to god's word no out of the mouth of your seed means you're supposed to teach your children also the same thing teach them that they should have the word of god in their mouth and let it not depart out of their out of their mouth they got to keep it in the mouth it's important <clears throat> my spirit that is upon thee and my words which i have put in your mouth uh, shall not depart out of your mouth and out of the mouth of your seed nor out of the mouth of thy seed seed I and mean, that's a responsibility we are given to be people who are responsible for your even for your grandchildren they're responsible thus said the lord from henceforth and forever it's not a command just for isaiah it's a command forever that you're going to teach your children to speak the word of god nothing but the word nothing but the word that should come out of your mouth so faith is believe who he is and know that he's a rewarder and also seeking him in diligence that will build yourself to the position where you will know the characteristic of faith my the character the character of faith is i receive my rewards as i diligently seek him because i believe that he is he is not going to be or he he is not he was he is right now faith is now faith is not a not the past or the future oh yeah jesus was good but the bible says jesus is the same yesterday today and forever he never changes he never decided to change so we need to hold on to the fact that my victory the victorious life that i live i live by the faith of the son of god I live by the faith of the Son of God. That's 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 something that has been put into me. I live by the faith of the Son of God, and that's how I overcome. I overcome situations. Your faith is always challenged. Your faith is juiced out. Your faith is challenged from the time you wake up in the morning, or probably even in your dreams. You can you can find evil spirits. There could be spirits that would come and and even bring some. weird thoughts into your mind and you wake up i'm wondering what am i going to do with this dream that i'm well if that dream has brought fear into your life it is not from god but when you wake up in the morning and if it is peaceful then you have had a peaceful night and if it is very specific then god has spoken to you god has spoken to you but when you when you wake up sweating all over you and you're afraid of something that really took place take authority over that spirit that is trying to that's hovering around you and say in the name of Jesus it shall not happen to me i take authority over that spirit that has that has that's coming into my life or that's that's trying to cause me to fail in life i bind that spirit and i cast it out or probably you you need to maybe if the lord is waking you up at a certain time and and, and showing you a person or maybe communicating with the person maybe the lord wants you to pray for that person so take a little time and pray for that person and commit that person into your into the hands of the lord so faith is that which comes out of your mouth is important second corinthians chapter 4 and verse 13 second corinthians chapter 4 and verse 13 some people have understood faith as always it's a journey of trials and tribulations and testings and difficult times i mean the more difficulty you have that's that's your faith no you don't know that faith is been juiced out in your difficult times in your troubled times in your in your tribulation in your in your in in, in all the trials that you face your faith has been challenged and your faith has been juiced out and you've got to say i'm going to stand against i'm going to build my faith up and i'm going to stand against those things that are trying to take away my faith and by the way your faith works with patience and joy your faith works with patience and joy second corinthians chapter 4 and verse 
we having the same spirit of faith or the character of faith the same spirit of faith it's a, it's a different spirit you I mean you will you'll find yourself in a in a position where you're so different to anybody else according as it is written i believed therefore have i spoken we also believe and therefore speak that's faith your speech can let you your speech can can uh, be judged and whether it's faith or fear or whether it's faith and fear mixed together your faith can be seen in your life are you in faith or are you in fear or are you coupling both together so your life would prove your words would prove whether you're in faith or in fear you got to be courageous now faith has faith never lies for no reason would be understand faith never lies when jesus heard about lazarus he said uh how 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 was his response let me let me show you let's go to that scripture in john chapter 11 god speaks beyond what we see that's why we call him we were toby and i were discussing about is god a liar i mean god sees beyond the situations that are around right god whom we trust he does not lie now in john chapter 11 and verse 4 verse 3 therefore his sisters sent unto him saying lord behold he whom thou lovest is sick and when jesus heard that this sickness is not unto death he said this sickness is not unto death but for the glory of god that the son of god may be glorified thereby now jesus now verse 5 now jesus loved martha and her sister mary that's not mentioned there but that's the only sister she had and lazarus when he had heard that he was sick he abode two days until in the same place where he was and was seven then after that saith he to his disciples let us go into judea his disciples say unto him master the jews of late sought to stone us and goest thou thither again i mean we were almost stoned there verse 9 are there not 12 hours in the day if any man walk in the day and he stumbleth not because he seeth the light of this world but if a man walk in the night he stumbleth because there is no light in him these things he said and after and after that he said unto them our friend lazarus sleepeth now he knew that lazarus had died but what did he say he didn't make things difficult for his faith to work he made it easy He said, "Our friend Lazarus is sleeping, but I go that I may wake him up out of out of his sleep." Now Jesus knew that he was dead, and the disciples said, "Lord, if he sleeps, he is doing well." And then Jesus had to answer and say, "Jesus made it very clear." Verse fourteen. Then said Jesus unto them plainly. Lazarus is dead. Now was he lying when he in, in when he made a statement that Lazarus is sleeping? He wasn't because he knew this 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 sickness is not unto death but for the glory of God. Right? So when we read scriptures, we always see God sees beyond our understanding, beyond what we could see in the natural. 
Here in one place he says he's sleeping, and next he confirms and says he's dead. He, the disciples couldn't take up. They couldn't take up if Lazarus is sleeping, so what? Let him sleep. We don't have to wake him up. But Jesus knew the seriousness of it, that he has to be there to wake him up or to bring him out of the grave. And the next thing we see, he comes out and calls Lazarus, come forth. In the eyes of Jesus, he was sleeping. But the disciples couldn't believe, so he had to just make things clear and plain. When he went to raise the dead of uh, Jairus' daughter, um, yeah, Jairus' daughter, the, the messenger had already brought the message by saying, the child is dead. But Jesus said, fear not, only believe. And he went along with him and they, when, they, when they went home, found that the mourners were mourning, the hired mourners, and all of a sudden Jesus said, she's not dead, she's asleep. She's asleep. Because faith always talks about results. She's asleep, I'm going to wake her up. And everybody laughed. They laughed to scorn because they were hired mourners, I suppose. Probably they were paid or they were fed probably there. And they were so Jesus immediately, courageously, with boldness, he put them all out and took the mother, the father, and the three disciples inside and said, Arise. So when Jesus, when you speak something out of your faith, it may look it may not look natural, it may not look uh, do you really think that he is he's talking the truth? I know he's lying. This pastor, I remember, he said uh, he was praying for something and uh, he said I, I was, he was praying for a certain thing and then and he told the congregation, I got it. And the congregation knew that he, not, he, never, he never got it. Probably he was believing for office space or a table and a chair and a... And, uh, he, he told the congregation, I've got everything that I wanted. And the congregation said, can we see what you got? They, they, I mean, they, they, they couldn't believe him because they knew that he had not got what he, he really wanted. They knew that he had not, they had not got. And, uh, and the Lord gave him the wisdom at that time. He said, I'm pregnant with what I have believed for. And I know at the appointed time, it shall be there. Faith is talking things that are not as though they were. That's how faith works. So our faith is enabling us, our faith enables us to overcome, overcome the world, the flesh and the devil. Our faith enables us to overcome the flesh, the world and the devil. Whoever your enemy is, your faith can make you overcome that situation. It's not going to be a situation that you can't overcome. So I believe it's so important that we, that we keep our faith focused on the Lord. Just one more scripture that I'm impressed to share. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 25. Having this confidence, I know that I shall abide and continue with you. Now he was talking about I am betwixt two, whether to die and go or whether to stay around. It is, if I die, it's gain for me, but if I live, it's Christ or it's anointing. Nevertheless, it is good for me to abide. Verse 24 says, it's, abide, it's good for me to abide, for it is needful for you. And then he talks about his confidence. He said, having this confidence, I know that I shall abide and continue with you for your furtherance and the joy of faith. Faith moves with the, with the joy, the level of joy that you have. Patience, faith, joy, they go hand in hand and bring the results into your hands. Believe God for great things in life. Father, we pray in Jesus' name. Your words bring joy and peace into our lives. We are not moved by what we see, but we are only moved by what we believe. We believe, Lord, that nothing is impossible with you. Sickness, disease, 
difficult times, problematic issues that needs solutions. Lord, you have wisdom that you have imparted into our lives, that we overcome any situation that is before us, any Goliath that stands before us, because our rewards are beyond Goliath. David, he saw something beyond what his, what his trial was. He knew what he was going to get and what his rewards are. And Father, we pray in Jesus' name, let us be reward conscious and let us be God-pleasing conscious and let us be people who, who are willing to be courageous and bold to live according to the scriptures. In Jesus' name, Amen.